going to be walking you through just an example of some of the work um, that we're doing to try to connect dots between policies and regulations and requirements and the technical design criteria that I know developers would like to know of. What do we need where? We've got a million things on our plate. We're trying to balance them all. So tell us what to do to incorporate safeguards by design. What does that look like? Security by design. Tell us where to put what. Um, so safeguards and security by design, the whole theme of this section here is it's a priority. We see here a quote from the National Nuclear Security Administrator who talked about um, the role of safeguards and security by design and how it's important. I've got another quote here, a recent National Academies study. There were two related to advanced reactors. This one was the laying the foundation for new and advanced nuclear reactors in the US. And there's a quote in it from the National Academies highlighting the need for the IEA and the Department of Energy to identify resources, technology gaps for international safeguards for advanced reactors. So this challenge here um, is really that what's required is these state or license applicant obligations they're typically high level, they're typically um, policy based and regulations. What would developers like to see? Um, we've heard from you, design criteria, specific technical recommendations, tell us where to put what, that's what we need to do. Um, you know, we're working a lot of different angles on this design. So what currently exists is some high level guidance documents from both the International Atomic Energy Agency, Tracy put up a couple on the screen, and I'm sure we're happy to connect dots of where to get those. Um, additionally, the National Nuclear Security Administration has some uh, additional guidance documents. They typically tend to be, though, very uh, generic, not facility specific, and store, still tending toward that kind of policy angle. What we're trying to put out there um, as an organization uh, here at ORNL and the R&D community more broadly working on these topics is something closer to technical recommendations. So we may not be able to provide you design criteria, but we're trying to do some data-driven, uh, mostly in the modeling and simulation space because we don't have access to uranium bearing or actinide bearing salt in loops where we can test out technologies. Um, hopefully that's to come but we recognize that some of the vendors are putting in license applications within the next year, and those will likely have an MCNA uh, plan uh, as a part of the license application. So you need things quickly. We're trying to kind of bridge the gap and get you what we can regarding technical recommendations. So my approach or how, how, how I've looked at this in the near future is really start by defining the objectives. So instead of starting with a instrument or a measurement technique and kind of picking where we might apply it, we're really thinking through what's, what's the goal, what's the objective. And so across a future MSR facility, what does that look like throughout the entire, all the process streams? And what are the nuclear material control and accountancy objectives? So two examples, there's lists of tens that we've come up with, but two examples are things like quantifying the nuclear material as it enters that difficult to access area so, you know, physical, biological shielding boundary where you can contain most of your process streams. Um, detecting nuclear material and used filters removed from an off-gas system. So those are just two of many examples. From that point, um, I identified what I thought was the most pressing R&D need. And I used a couple of metrics for that. And obviously different people can have different opinions here, but kind of where I looked at was, what's the nearest term challenge? What are the gaps in current technologies? And then what's of importance to safeguards and security? So a case study, one example I'll walk you through, we've done this in a couple of different areas, but one that I'll walk you th through here is specifically looking at feed monitoring. So that's the initial and makeup feed salt as it's entering this difficult to access area. Um, how could we do something there where we can actually quantify the nuclear material as it's entering to ensure that it's as declared or that theft hasn't occurred um, between where it was open from item form and where it's going into a difficult to access area. So the question that I looked at, um, are there signatures to quantify or monitor nuclear material and fuel salt feed that can be measured from outside of piping? So others are looking at ideas, electrochemical sensors, optical, um, things that use optical windows, 
And so I really wanted to explore this space of what could we put on the outside of insulation even and look at what you've got in your pipes to get out of uh, the not be so burdensome and involve touching your salt. So we did some modeling and simulation again, would love to do real measurements. Hopefully that's to come. That's just not really a possibility right now. So this, uh, the purpose of this was really a feasibility study to see what kind of, I'll call them commercial off the shelf like technologies. Um, so these are examples of sodium iodide, high purity germanium, neutron detectors that have been uh, applied by the International Atomic Energy Agency in the past in similar methods. So it's not exactly something you can buy from the store, but it's something that's proven higher technical readiness level, not something that's a really novel low TRL um, idea. So I did modeling for these, looked at a couple of different parameters. And the goal of this talk is not necessarily to give you all the results. It's just to walk you through this methodology, show you that we're thinking about this, show you the kind of work that we're doing. So um, we looked at a number of different parameters related to what the developers can choose. So those are things like the types of salt. We looked at a fluorine salt, a fluorine based salt and a chloride based salt. We looked at uranium enrichments of varying levels, two different pipe materials, um, different outer diameters and different pipe thicknesses. I will pause here and tell you that um, there's a lot of information that's really helpful from our perspective that you might be willing to share as a developer, but might not think to put it in publications or, or open source information, that can be really helpful to us. So things like the Hastelloy Inn and the Inconel 625, there was actually pretty significant differences um, of, the detect of the signals or signatures that you see on the outside of pipe just be based on the composition of those two pipes. So knowing what pipe diameters you might be open to or what materials you're thinking about using for that pipe is actually really helpful to us. So just a plug there to, uh, to share what you can because it's helpful to us in that modeling and simulation space. On the detector side, we looked at sodium iodide, high purity germanium, passive neutron, and then we also looked at act active neutron. So a little more ask of the developers, but we would put something like an americium lithium source on one side of your of a pipe or a tank and then have a detector on the other side of that. So we are creating a rad environment where um, you might only have low enriched uranium. So it is an ask of some sort, but still looking at driving things in this direction of things we can put on the outside of your pipes instead of inside. So here's just some images, just to again, show you the type of modeling we're doing. Um, so to Marissa's point earlier, um, we certainly had to make some assumptions here. You know, we used a density for this uranium chloride salt. Um, it may not be the, you know, in a year we might have a different, a slightly different density, but all of this is aimed toward feasibility studies, show us what might be the most helpful uh, R&D wise, and what we might want to focus and prioritize measurement campaigns on in the future. So it's not perfect. We recognize that, but it's a goal just to move us in the right direction and prioritize things in a very fast moving, uh, fast paced environment. So we made a collar with around a pipe with these helium three tubes. Um, so that's just depicting that. So here's a summary of the findings. Again, that's not the point of this talk is to walk you through, but I will point out that things like, well, that there wasn't a solution that fit all of the different designs out there that we might see. Um, there are, however, a couple of promising technologies. Uh, you'll see that things like the enrichment of the uranium in the salt certainly matters. It's much easier to detect radiation signal signatures from high assay LEU uh, fuel salt as opposed to, say, natural uranium. Uh, the pipe diameter matters. It's easier to see in some of these techniques a large diameter pipe just because we have more uh, salt and more uh, uranium in that salt. So conclusions. From what we looked at, which was only uranium bearing salt at this time, however, we have kind of a modeling and simulation pipeline connecting a couple of different tools that could be translated to look at things other than just uranium bearing salt. We can put other actinides in that and model it. Um, 
So penetrating radiation can be a useful signature for both quantifying and monitoring unirradiated fuel salt. Gamma and neutron detectors could be placed outside of even the insulation, which helps with electronics because of uh, just temperature up close to the pipe. And no detection system worked for everything, but high purity germanium detectors and passive neutron, uh, passive total neutron counting work for most, which is promising. And design decisions that you can make impact the feasibility of instrumentation. And so it'd be really great if we could come out with some technical recommendations to you all of, you know, this pipe diameter is easiest for us to use this type of instrumentation. And then you could take that into account considering all the other factors that you have on your plate um, to, to weigh those and, and ultimately come to a conclusion for your design. So, uh, in conclusion, this idea is just that the goal is to drive security regulations and safeguards by design best practices toward these technical recommendations. And this requires that early engagement when your designs can still be changed. Uh, we have to make a lot of assumptions. So it's kind of an iterative process of making the assumptions, giving you the recommendations, and then feeding that back in if that's not possible. And we're leveraging these modeling and simulation tools. Several have been mentioned already. Uh, scale origin was used, um, MCMP is very helpful, GADRAS, GEONT4, we've used a number of different um, tools in that. So I'll stop there and just say that we do, we are continuing this work. We're doing it in a structured fashion where we're really surveying across the different uh, technologies that could be useful and applying figures of merit robustly across those um, using literature reviews and other current for an R&D effort. So we are thinking about this topic and would love to hear your feedback of how we can make this even more useful to you all as the end users. Um, and I'll stop there and have time for one question. Are there, uh, so, so are there any plans for, I guess, demonstrations or like physical mock-up of the sensor setups that you're thinking about? So I feel like that could be a, a big deal for some of these ideas, right? Yes. Um, my dream, our dream, I think would be something like that at one of the labs where we could have access to different material. So different salt types, different enrichments, flowing in loops, in tanks, be able to apply different sensors. That sounds like a dream. If anyone would like to fund that, um, we'll, we'll take your card. Um, but it doesn't exist currently. We're piecing together things. I think there's a lot of opportunity for some collaboration with the molten salt research reactor that's coming online. We'd love to, to help you with some sensor um, ideas in that. Um, however, they need an MCNA approach for their licensing application prior to being able to do that. So it's this chicken and the egg type thing. So, yeah, thanks. Um, sure, one more, Charles. As I briefly mentioned, for those of you who weren't here in the first session of the morning, we plan to build that flowing salt loop with uranium in it in about a year and a half with two gamma detectors and with associated with our friends at the University of Texas. So, uh, this may happen sooner than you think, but there's actually a real system, which is going to be a little ahead of the Abilene Christian University, we hope. <laughs> Great point. All right. More synergy. Thank you, Charles. I, I shouldn't have left you out. All right. Thanks so much. That's the end of our session.